All right, statisticians, here's a quick video. We're actually going to calculate the power of a test using our hands and our handy dandy calculators. And hopefully this will deepen your understanding of some of the things that are really affecting power here. So, and really where it's coming from. So, all right, we've got the, the power of a, uh, let's, let's look at this particular situation. We, let's say we have a null hypothesis that the true mean is 500. And the alternative is that the mu is less than 500. Let's say we know the population standard deviation is 25. And then we collect a sample of a hundred things and we find a sample mean of 495. Now, we see that this is evidence against the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. And so let's carry out the test at, I don't know, let's pick a level of significance, say alpha equals 0.05, because it's one of our lovely go-tos. And let's see what happens. So if we were to do the test, uh, you know, this say this meets all the conditions of inference and all that junk, we can go over here to test, we can go to z-test, and we've got um, null hypothesis of 500, standard deviation at 25, sample mean of 495, um, sample size of 100, it's a left tail test, let's calculate, and shazam. We got a test statistic that comes out to exactly negative two, when that almost never happens, this is clearly probably some kind of contrived example, um, negative two point, say, zero, zero, and then the p-value is, um, 0.02275. So um, in this particular situation, we would absolutely reject the null hypothesis, right? We reject, reject the hoe, right? Why do we reject the hoe? Well, our p-value is less than our level of significance. Yay. So, okay. Now, when we're talking about power, we're talking about the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is in fact true, and we successfully detect that it's not true, and we reject it, right? So it's only gonna, we're only, power makes sense is if the alternative is what is true, right? So um, let's, let's just say, for instance, that the alternative hypothesis was true, and let's, let's say, let's say theoretically that the true mu was in fact something like say 494, right? Say it was 494, it was even less than the sample mean that we actually collected, right? So that would definitely mean that the alternative is true and the null hypothesis is false. It definitely was not 500, it's, I'm telling you right now, it's 494. Let's calculate what the power of the test would have been in this scenario. So the first step here is for us to get the sort of get the lay of the land. And I'm going to draw a distribution. I'm going to draw first a distribution that would be based on the null hypothesis, right? Remember the null hypothesis said that um, we should be getting a, um, a value of 500 on average, right? But then remember, based on that null hypothesis distribution, we would end up rejecting the null hypothesis if we got any sample means that would sort of come all the way down here, that there was only a 5% chance that it'd get a sample mean that was so low that would cause us to reject the null hypothesis. So the first thing we're actually do is figure out what that boundary rejection value of a sample mean would be, right? How low would a sample mean have to get so that we would have rejected it based on this null hypothesis? We know that there was a 5% chance. So for this, I could use inverse norm. Let's go to inverse norm, and we've got 0.05 for our area to the left. We're going to stick 500, which is uh, the mean of the hypothesized distribution based on the null hypothesis. We've got the standard deviation, 25 divided by root 100, um, and we get a sample mean of 495.9 approximately, right? And so in this case, it's 495.9. This marker is starting to get beat up. That's sad. So any sample means that I would get from this popu um, uh, from this distribution that would be below 495.9 would cause me to reject an all hypothesis. Now, if you notice in this particular instance, uh, that's exactly what I did, right? Um, here, I'm grabbing another marker. You'll see that the sample mean I actually got was 495, which um, this, which was like just a little bit less. And so we ended up getting a p-value here. I'm doing like red on red. What's the point of that? Um, let's see here. Let's, let me do blue again, right? Um, here I got a, a p-value that was just a tad bit less because my sample mean of 495, right, was a, just a little bit less than 495.9. So that is why I rejected the null hypothesis. Now, that value of 495.9, this is the, any sample mean below this would cause me to reject. If I want to calculate the power and the probability of a type 2 error and stuff like that, let's now situate this particular value within the true distribution. Now, remember, the true distribution is not going to be centered at 500 because that was based on the null hypothesis. The true distribution should have the same standard deviation um, as this guy, except it's going to be centered at the new true mean. 
And this is not really new. This was the truth all along. We just didn't know it. So if I was to draw next to this, now I'm going to sort of run out of space here, but let's continue the number line. Centered at 494. So if this is approximately 495, 494, I'm just you know roughly estimating. It would be maybe right or about there. Um, and if I was to draw this distribution, unless this gets tricky because I need to do it almost as beautifully and as the last one. Oh, that's not bad. I'm getting pretty good at this, right? But then now I look at this value of 495.9 and I go up and I compare it. I can ignore the green distribution now. I'm only going to look at this black guy. And this black guy is based on uh, something that has a mean of 494 and a standard deviation of 25 divided by the square root of 100, right? Um, remember this guy over here, which I'll write in green, it had uh, it was based on a mean of 500 with the same standard deviation, 25 divided by the square root of 100. And so now this guy, if I want to talk about the power of the test, I'll say, how likely was it for me in reality to get a sample mean that was less than 495.9, right? Based on the true distribution itself. Well, if I want to know that, I can shade everything uh, to the left here. Let's go here, blah, 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 blah. And everything I shade now. now Based on the null hypothesis, there should have only been a 5% chance that I would accomplish this if the null hypothesis were true. But now we know that the truth was 494, right? Um, I never labeled that. Let me write that there. Ooh, this is going to be too thick, I think, 494, right? So that's it. That's a four. So everything this way, this guy now is the power. This is the power of the test. So let's calculate that. That's going to be... Um, a nice size value. It's going to be over 50%. It's not like super powerful, but relatively powerful. I'm going to go to normal CDF and let's see here. This is everything to the left. So let's say negative 9999. The upper boundary is going to be the, 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 the sample mean that acted as sort of the rejection region for me rejecting the null hypothesis. That was approximately 495.9. The, the mu now is 494. The standard deviation was again uh, 25 divided by the square root of 100. And let's calculate. And I got, ooh, look at that. Looky loo. The power of this test, right? Um, we'll get a different marker here. Let's, I'll use red, right? Um, the power of this test was about uh, 0.7764. Four, right? 77.64% um, chance that I would choose to reject the null hypothesis uh, in this particular instance. Why? Because there was a 77.64% chance that I would get a sample mean that was below 495.9 for the true distribution that was based on 494, right? In, uh, uh, notice that calculating the power I stopped thinking about the hypothesized distribution because I know the truth now, right? And so the key idea here is because the truth was further over here, it was in favor of the alternative, I had a very nice powerful test. You can imagine if I was to just move this distribution further to the left, right, where it had the exact same spread, the same standard deviation, then you could see that the power would increase and increase. And if the more I'd go over this way, uh, the power would kind of de decrease because we're constantly looking at this little value right there. Um, and actually, when I drew this, I'm, I'm going to just get a little picky with myself. I think when I drew this bar going straight up, I actually drew it a little bit too much to the left. Remember, this bar was actually supposed to be centered right over where that rejection sample mean was there. So anyways, um, I hope this helps. This is how we calculated the power. Um, just for fun, when we calculated the power, we, of course, also calculated beta. Beta, the probability of a type 2 error, would have been over here. This is beta, right? There's beta. Um, why is this beta over on this side? Well, uh, in these, this situation, we would have gotten a sample mean that was bigger than what we wanted. And beta would have simply been um, 1 minus this guy. Oh, I just noticed my calculator is about to run out of power. That's so sad. Um, the beta would have been just 22.36%, right? There was a 22.36% chance that I would have failed to reject the null hypothesis just by chance, which would have been sad. In other words, getting some sample mean that was close to 500, when in reality, it should have been down here, right? Um, so there you go, guys. There's a nice example of calculating power. I hope you could follow that. And um, uh, you'll have a little assignment where you're going to calculate power on your own. Hopefully, it'll deepen your understanding of this stuff. Guys, have a beautiful day, and I will catch you on the flip side.